How many times have you heard that you can't do this, you can't do that, and it has never been done before? Just imagine if Bill Gates had quit when people say it can't be done. I hear this all the time. As a matter of fact, I love it when someone says that never, no one has ever done this before because then when I do it, that means that I'm the first one that has done it. And I said to my family, I want to be a bodybuilding champion. Now you can imagine how that went over in my home in Austria. My parents, they couldn't believe it. They would have been just happy if I would have become a police officer like my father or married someone like Heidi. Uh, who had a bunch of, had a bunch of kids and ran around like the Van Trapp family in Sound of Music. That's what my family had in mind for me. But something else burned inside me. Something burned inside me. I wanted to be different. I was determined to be unique. I was driven to think big and to dream big. Everyone else thought that I was crazy. My friend said, if you want to be a champion in a sport, why don't you go and become a bicycle champion or a skiing champion or a soccer champion? Those are the Austrian sports. But I didn't care. I wanted to be a bodybuilding champion and use that to come to America and use that to go into the movies and make millions of dollars. So pay no attention to the people that say it can't be done. After all, I remember that after I was finished with my bodybuilding career, I wanted to get into acting and I wanted to be a, a star in films. You can imagine what the agents said when I went to meet all those agents. Everyone had the same line that it can't be done. The rules are different here. He says, look at your body. You have this huge, monstrous body and overly developed that doesn't fit into the movies. You don't understand. This was 20 years ago, the Hercules movies. Now there is the little guys that are in. Dustin Hoffman, Woody Allen, Chuck Nicholson. And the agent also complained about my accent. He says, no one ever became a star with an accent like that, especially not with a German accent. And yes, I can imagine with your name, Arnold Schwarzen Schnitzel or whatever the name is, on a billboard. Yeah, that's going to draw a lot of tickets and sell a lot of tickets. You're yeah, right. So this is the kind of negative attitude they had, but I didn't li listen to those rules. Even though they were very nice and they said, look, we can get you some bit parts. We can make a, get you to be, a, you know, playing a wrestler or a bouncer. Oh, maybe with your German accent, we can get you to be a, a Nazi officer in Hogan's Heroes or something like that. But, uh, you know, I didn't listen to all this. This were their rules, not my rules. I was convinced I could do it, that if I worked as hard as I did in bodybuilding, five hours a day, and I started getting to work, I started taking acting classes, took English classes, speech classes, dialogue classes, accent removal classes I even took. And finally I broke through. I broke through and I started getting the first parts in TV, Streets of San Francisco, Lucille Ball hired me, I made Pumping Iron, Stay Hungry, and then I got the big break in Conan the Barbarian. And there the director said if we wouldn't have Schwarzenegger we would have to build one. Now think about that. And then when I did Terminator, I'll be back. Became most of, one of the most famous lines in a, a movie history, all because of my crazy accent. Now think about it, the things that the agent said will be totally a, a detriment and will be impossible for me to get a job, all of a sudden became an asset for me. All of those things, my accent, my body and everything. So it just shows you, never listen that you can't do something. And you have to work your way up, of course, run for something else first. I mean, it was the same in, 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 when I ran for governor. The same lines, that you have to work your way up, it can't be done. And then, of course, I ran for governor, and the rest, of course, is history. They said you have to start with a small job as mayor, and then as assemblyman, and then as lieutenant governor, and then as governor. And they said, that's the way it works in a political career. I said, I'm not interested in a political career. I want to be a public servant. I want to fix California's problems and bring people together and bring the parties together. So, like I said, I decided to run. I didn't pay attention to the rules, and uh, I made it, and the rest is history. People ask me all the time, they say to me, what is the secret to success? So many young people are getting so much advice from their parents and from the teachers and from everyone.
But what is most important is that you have to dig deep down, dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who. And I'm talking about not what your parents and teachers want you to be, but you. I'm talking about figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy. No matter how crazy it may sound to the people. I spent a lot of time by myself so I could figure out and listen to what is inside my heart and inside my head. Something burned inside me, I wanted to be different. I was determined to be unique. I was driven to think big and to dream big. I always wanted to be very intense. I always wanted to be number one. I took it very seriously in my career. And so this intensity always paid off for me. This commitment always paid off for me. I didn't want to just be a bodybuilding champion. I wanted to be the best bodybuilder of all times. I didn't want to just be a movie star. I wanted to be a great movie star that's the highest paid movie star and have above the title building. I mean, how many times have you heard that you can't do this, you can't do that, and it has never been done before? I hear this all the time. I was told to my face, you're, you're nothing but a giant muscle. You can't act. You have no future and you have an accent that is laughable. That just shows you again so much for it can't be done. This is why I try to tell you anything and everything can be done if you can visualize it, if you believe in yourself. You're going to find the naysayers in every turn that you make. Don't listen. Just visualize your goal, know exactly where you want to go. Trust yourself. So pay no attention to the people that say it can't be done. Trust yourself no matter how, what anyone else thinks. What is the point of being on this earth if all you want to do is be liked by everyone and avoid trouble? We have so many rules in life about everything. The only way that I ever got any place was the breaking some of the rules. It is impossible to be a maverick or a true original if you're too well behaved and not want to break the rules. You have to think outside the box. Now, of course, this journey is not going to be without any setbacks and failures or disappointments. That's just the way life is. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You can't be paralyzed by fear of failure or you will never push yourself. You keep pushing because you believe in yourself and in your vision. And you know that it is the right thing to do. Success will come, so don't be afraid to fail. I always believe leaving no stone unturned. That's what makes you a champion. When you're out there partying, washing around, Someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. But if you want to win, there's absolutely no way around hard, hard work. No pain, no gain. Whatever path that you take in your life, you must always find time to give something back. Something back to your community, give something back to your state or to your country. Tear down that mirror. Tear down that mirror that makes you always look at yourself. And you will be able to look beyond that mirror and you will see the millions of people that need your help. Reaching out and helping people will bring you more satisfaction than anything else you've ever done. Trust yourself. Break some rules, don't be afraid to fail, ignore the naysayers, work like hell and give something back. I remember my mother-in-law, Eunice Kennedy Shriver. When she started Special Olympics in 1968, people said that it would not work. The experts, the doctors that specialized in mental disabilities and mental retardation said it can't be done. You can't bring people out of the institution. You can't make them participate in sports and jumping and swimming and in running. They will hurt themselves. They will hurt each other. They will drown in the pool. 
But let me tell you something, now 40 years later, Special Olympics is one of the greatest organizations in 164 countries dedicated to people with mental disabilities and with intellectual challenge, with intellectual challenge. And she did not take no for an answer. And the same is when you look at Barack Obama. I mean, imagine if he would have listened. If he would have listened to the naysayers, he would have never run for president. People said it couldn't be done, that he couldn't get elected, that he couldn't beat Hillary Clinton, that he would never win the general election. But he followed his own heart. He didn't listen to the you can't, and he changed the course of American history. So over and over you see that if I would have listened to the naysayers, I would still be in the Austrian Alps yodeling. I would never have come to America. I would have never met my wonderful wife, Maria Shriver. I would have never had the wonderful four kids. I would have never done Terminator. And I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today as governor of the greatest state of the greatest country in the world. So I never listened that you can't. I always listened to myself and said, yes, you can. Oh, I'm a coming